Death with dignity is the concept that a terminally ill person should be allowed to die naturally and comfortably rather than experience a comatose, vegetative life prolonged by mechanical support systems. In 1994, Oregon became the first state to legalize assisted suicide through the Oregon Death with Dignity Act. In 1997, it survived a ballot measure seeking its repeal. Under the Oregon Death with Dignity Act, state licensed physicians who, in compliance with the specific safeguards, dispense or prescribe a lethal do dose of drugs upon the request of a terminally ill patient. From the Supreme Court documents, the criteria to be able to perform death with dignity reads, for Oregon residents to be eligible to request a prescription under the Oregon Death with Dignity Act, they must receive a diagnosis from their attending physician that they have an incurable or an irreversible disease that, within reasonable, ju reasonable medical judgment, will cause death within six months. Attending physicians must also determine whether a patient has made a voluntary request ensure a patient's choice is informed, and refer patients to counseling if they might be suffering from a psychological disorder or depression causing impaired judgment. A second consulting physician must examine the patient and the medical records and confirm the attending physician's conclusions. According to Dr. Marcia Ingo, who is pictured in the slide, she is all for the Death with Dignity Act and states, the Death with Dignity Act has the advantage of bringing assisted dying into the open, regulating it, and most important, putting patients in charge. The patient already knows he or she has less than six months to live, and, the many, and many believe that the Death with Dignity Act allows for them to know exactly how many days they have left rather than living the remainder of their life in the unknown. Upon receiving approval by the state, patients who are accepted under the Death with Dignity Act are eligible to request a prescription for a lethal medication from a practicing licensed physician. The prescription will be for a lethal dose of pentyl barbitol. In order to receive the prescription, according to the Department of Human Services, Office of Disease Prevention and Epidemiology, the patient must make two oral requests to their physician, separated by at least 15 days. The patient must make a written request to their physician, signed in the presence of two witnesses. The prescribing physician and consulting physician must confirm the prognosis and diagnosis. The prescribing physician must inform the patient of feasible alternatives such as hospice care and pain control. This criteria allows the physician, patient, and patient's family to be reassured that this choice is an honest, well-thought-through decision. Pentobarbital is a barbiturate that, when taken in a lethal dose, will cause a patient to slip into a coma and eventually die. According to the fourth annual report on the Death with Dignity Act of Oregon in 2001, one half of patients become unconscious within three minutes and died within 25 minutes. In addition, the graph on this slide represents the number of people who have used Oregon's Death with Dignity Act annually from 1998 to 2010. As you can see, the numbers have fluctuated but reached a peak in 2010 as the act became more well known. When the time comes and the patient has decided to take the medication that will end their life, there are numerous steps that need to be taken. First, the patient will call upon a representative from Compassion and Choices a death with dignity supporting organization, or their physician and call them to be present at their death. Then the patient will have someone open up all the capsules and pour their contents into a small glass with eight ounces of water. When the time comes to drink the medication, the patient will be asked a series of two questions by the representative or physician. First, the representative will tell them that they have the right to change their mind. And second, they will ask the patient, what will this medication do to you? The patient is asked these last two questions in order to solidify their decision and to show them that they are still in complete control. Upon answering these questions firmly and accurately, the patient will drink the medication within 60 to 90 seconds, lay down, and slowly fall into a comatose state, and not long after, they will die. Now we are going to show a video of a patient completing the Death with Dignity Act, so if you feel that you may not be able to handle this, please exit the room now. He has to drink within 60 to 90 seconds. He drinks the medication, and that will put him in a coma within a matter of minutes. And after that, we we'll wait never, for me to die. Yeah, and we can never predict how long that will take. Now, Roger, uh, I talked to the other woman in there and said this stuff tastes pretty nasty. Mm -hmm. And you could have some juice or something in there and said, Do you well, want to see if I can handle it. Out? 
Would yeah, you I, like I something like that? Yeah, 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 like yeah, we have cream yeah. soda. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. I, I do you want to get that ready in case Roger yeah. wants it? Well, well, there's a Bring the goddamn glass. Roger, Roger, wait a minute. Before you take it, I'm going to ask you these two questions again. Sure. And, and I'm serious. You have the right to change your mind. My mind's not changing. All right. And what will this medication do? It will kill me and make me happy. Okay. We can hand you the medication now, and we ask you to drink it in 60 to 90 seconds. Okay. You don't have to gulp it. Just take it slowly. Okay. It tastes pretty bad, but you have here a soft drink to chase it down with afterwards, but you cannot take this one, too. Mm -hmm. Do you have any final words you'd like to say to your family? I thank you all for being here. We love you. We love you, Raj. We'll leave you alone. I thank the wisdom of the voters of the state of Oregon for allowing me the honor of doing myself in at my own volition to solve my own problems. So thank you all. We yeah. love you. Yeah, I don't really want to watch this part. This, well, here, just, it's kind of too late now. Okay. You don't have to gulp it, Roger. You can slow drink down, it slowly. Slow it down. You can Can somebody wipe my chin? Sure. Tastes like wood. <laughs> He's never been a drinker, so he wouldn't know what... What he, wood is? I wouldn't know what wood alcohol is. Are you ready? No. no. Let the name, let yeah, name here. Ah, oh, it's coming. Ah, oh, it's coming. For my head is hanging low. I hear the gentle voices calling, Oh, Black Joe. I thank you all, particularly the team that prepared the medicine. Tell the next person that it tastes woody, but it is not, it is not rejectable. It was easy, folks. It was easy. The topic of death with dignity is sociologically relevant since the decision of whether or not it should be legal is ongoing. Since the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in 2006 that legality of physician-assisted suicide is up to the individual states, Oregon, Washington, and Montana legalized highly regulated forms of physician-assisted suicide, and states like Hawaii, Vermont, and Massachusetts have been pushing for its legalization as well. The topic of choosing to die with dignity is also becoming more sociologically relevant due to recent interest on social media. Brittany Maynard, an advocate for death with dignity, chose to end her own life at age 29 because she was suffering from a terminal form of brain cancer. With one six-minute video, Brittany Maynard started a global conversation about death with dignity, showing that more people in our society are becoming aware of the issues Brittany brought to attention through the use of social media. Society clearly cares about the topic of dying with dignity, which is proven by the fact that it is an ongoing ethical argument. Many people have rallied in support of Brittany's decision and shared their own experiences as examples in support of the legalization of physician-assisted suicide. As Brittany Maynard popularly stated, I believe this choice is ethical and what makes it ethical is it is a choice. The opposing opinion against legalization of death with dignity proves equally that society cares about the topic. The fight over whether terminally ill people can take their own lives has attracted religious heavyweights with the Roman Catholic Churches leading the fight against the practice. Our topic's relation to different races and social classes is a concern. For organizations like the Catholic Church, Right to Life groups, and the American Medical Association, physician-assisted suicide is like a slippery slope that may adversely affect the elderly and the impoverished. Research indicates that a certain demographic variables consistently and strongly predict support for or opposition to the practice. People who consider themselves religious 
women, African Americans, and the elderly are in general more likely to oppose f physician assisted suicide. Globally, the topic of making physician assisted suicide legal is ongoing, just like it is here in the US. So far, it's legal in Luxembourg and the Netherlands, and legal under certain circumstances in Switzerland, similar to the criteria states in America are able to assist in suicide under. It remains illegal in countries like Canada, Australia, and Germany. Specifically, in the United Kingdom, deliberately assisting a suicide is illegal. Between 2003 and 2006, Lord Joff made four attempts to introduce bills that would have legalized assisted suicide in England and Wales. All were rejected by the UK Parliament. A poll sponsored by Dignity and Dying found that 75% of the British public agreed with proposals of the bill, which would be debated in 2014. This shows that like the US, the public are advocating for the legalization of physician-assisted suicide. The functionalist perspective, also called functionalism, is one of the major theoretical perspectives in psychology. It has its origins in the works of Emily Durkheim, who was especially interested in how social order is possible or how society remains relatively stable. Functionalism interprets each part of society in terms of how it contributes to the stability of the entire society. Society is more than the sum of its parts. Rather, each part of society is functional for the stability of the whole society. Using this perspective to theorize about the phenom phenomenon of aging, many functionalists believe that society and the individual mutually sever many relationships during the aging process. According to the disengagement theory, this process is good for individuals because it allows them to refocus on end-of-life considerations and preparation for death. And it is also good for society because it enables the smooth transition of social roles from one generation to the next. The theory was formulated by Cumming and Henry in 1961 in the book Growing Old, and it was the first theory of aging that social scientists developed. The disengagement theory suggests that reduced interaction between elderly people and other members of society is unavoidable, mutual, and acceptable. It, al it also suggests that remaining members of society are freed from having to see the painful side of aging, death, and dysfunction. When aging individuals disengage from society when the time is right, they are making room for the younger people to fill their roles. This process is desirable for both the young and the aging. The theory allows older individuals to prepare themselves for the end of their life and it frees them from the expectations of their previous life. Some important points that we want you to take away from our research presentation are that death with dignity is a medical practice in which terminally ill and or mentally competent adult requests and a doctor prescribes a life-ending medication the person self-administers when and if they choose. Death with dignity laws are voluntary and a recent national polling puts public support for death with dignity at 70%. Together it is our opinion, as a group, that by passing the death with dignity law in more states, it will give more people access to an open, accessible medical practice that gives every American the sense of peace that many terminally ill people seek. So far, research has only been done with people that either agree or disagree with the death with dignity law. Very little research has been conducted inside the group of people who have chosen to use the act. With more research done within this group, we as a society may be able to better understand the emotions and thoughts present when making such a big decision. We also found that there needs to be more research on how race and socioeconomic status play a role in making the ethical decision to end one's life. Though we were able to find a little research incorporating race and socioeconomic status, even more research would, have, would help people develop a better perspective. We want to leave you with the final statement that it is important that you consider all perspectives of an argument when dealing with something as important as someone's life. We do not know what it is like to be terminally ill, therefore it is important to consider all aspects of the argument before supporting or opposing the controversial law.